Hi everybody, it's the Soap Man, and it's time to make my extra batch of the month to go to the street ministry. You're staring straight down at the crock pot, you know what that means, hot process time. This is not going to be a full-blown tutorial, this is going to be kind of an abbreviated tutorial. If you're looking for a really full-blown tutorial, you're wanting to know how to make hot process, I've got a couple on my site, lots of people out there have them. I watched lots of videos before I did it on my own. So, my recipe is listed below. You're welcome to use it. For the colors, I'm going to attempt three. I'm going to have one color just completely uncolored, natural. One is going to be Nurture Soap's Trial by Fire. And the other is going to be Nurture Soap's Orange Marmalade. And for the fragrance, I'm using up a bunch of fragrances. I'm mixing the last of them. Like, I had the Fireside Cider that... Uh, just oh my gosh if you watched it last week it seized in the cold process uh, did not use it in the frosting so I had some left over but it smells absolutely fantastic and I thought that cinnamon cider like would go with the other fragrances I'm using up the last of my mango peach from crafters choice this causes extreme acceleration in cold process so I didn't use it I only used it in hot process I'm using up the last of Crafter's Choice Blackberries and Spice Pear, another favorite. This causes considerable but manageable acceleration if you work quickly. And then the rest, I'm using Crafter's Choice Orange Cranberry, which behaves beautifully in cold process. All three of these smell fantastic, um, and all three of them really hold their scent, so I think I'm going to have a great scent in this one. That's one thing I really like about Hot Process. If you have a fragrance that behaves abhorrently in cold process, you can use it in hot process. It does not matter because when you pour it in at the end, it's soap. It's a totally different mixture. It's not caustic, greasy soap batter. And there are no issues when you use it in hot process. So, let's get started. Um, my, lye, my lard didn't fully melt, but it's almost melted. And I'm getting ready to pour hot... Uh, hot lye water in here. Now that's one another thing I like about hot process. You don't have to worry about your temperatures. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to cool down. As a matter of fact, I start out with very hot oils and very hot lye. Let's see what my lye temperature is. It is 161 degrees. This is 127 degrees. You'd never do that with cold process, but it doesn't matter with hot process because you're going to heat it up to cook it. And the hotter it starts, the less cooking time you need. So let's just go ahead and start because the rest of that lard will melt. I have no doubt when that hot lye hits it and it's really soft. I use lard in this recipe because it helps keep it more fluid at the end and I actually like this recipe better than my regular. When I use a bar of the hot process with this recipe I get better lather. I really like this one better, but I generally use my regular for cold process and I use this one for hot process, but that is the reason I use lard in my hot process. So let's pour our lye in here very carefully because this is very hot. Rinse that out in just a minute. I like my hot process extremely well emulsified, so I'm gonna stick blend a long time. I will speed this. All right, I will be back when we get to the first step, so I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so it's time to stir. I've stirred two or three times, but we go through three phases in hot process. We go through applesauce, which is where we are now because it looks like applesauce. Then we go through mashed potatoes because it starts to come back together and look like mashed potatoes. Then we're at full gel when it's cooked. But you see there's oil on top. Um, it has completely separated. It's supposed to do that. This is, mashed, or this is the applesauce stage because it has the appearance of applesauce. 
This is where the soap does separate and it is completely normal. Nothing to panic about. It will come back together. I just give everything a good stir to keep it mixed in and kind of make sure the heat's well distributed, not just along the edges. So just give it a good stir, put the lid back on, and I'll bring you along when we get to the mashed potato stage. As soon as I pick up the spatula. Okay, just thought I'd bring you back for one of the stirrings. We're not at mashed potatoes yet, but we're getting close. It's still applesauce. See how fluid it is? Still looks like applesauce. But look how it's really getting active. You never, ever want to leave hot process unattended. You should only fill your crock pot about half full of liquid. Because this is going to get pretty wicked here in the next few minutes. It's going to start to climb. And if you just walk away and leave it, it will rise up, throw the lid off. You're going to have caustic soap all over the counter, all over the floor. Been there, done that. So anyway, just a quick stir, but it is starting to come back together. There's not so much oil, so we'll be at mashed potatoes pretty soon. Looking good. All right, just another quick stir. I can't exactly say we're at mashed potatoes yet, but we are real close, and look how this is rising up. This is why you never should fill your crock pot more than halfway, because it's gonna do some more climbing, and that's why it's important to stay here and be ready to stir it. Maybe even have a couple of pot pads or towels in case you have to yank this out of the base quickly. I know this crock pot and this recipe, I shouldn't have to, but I'm ready just in case, so. We'll be at mashed potato stage really soon. All right, it's official. I think we have mashed potatoes. We are at the mashed potato stage, which means the soap is getting very close to being cooked. It's coming back together. No more oil floating loosely. We'll be at this stage probably just a few minutes, and it will be in full gel phase. And when it's at that point, it's cooked. It's soap. So. We're almost there, folks. See you in a bit. All right, my camera's probably not picking this up, but see, it still looks like mashed potatoes, but it's starting to get shiny spots. What that is, that's gel phase starting to happen. So we're almost at full gel phase. And when that happens, we have soap. So I'm talking probably like less than two minutes, but see how even where I'm stirring it, seeing how it's climbing, gets it pretty active. Never ever leave it alone, but we're almost at gel phase. All right, so less than a minute. Uh, look how it's climbing out the top. I've, got, I've just left the lid off, pulled the plug. I'm gonna let the residual heat finish it, but it's shiny, it's glossy, it's gel phase. This is soap. Now, this fluffiness will actually start to calm down when it starts to cool. But what I need to do now is get this out of this hot base and get some sodium lactate in it. So let's do that. Because it is soap. Now the reason I put sodium lactate in it is to help keep it more fluid while it cools. Oh yeah, it's really shiny and glossy. It's definitely full gel phase. Sodium lactate's completely optional. You do not have to do it, but it helps manage it. It stays fluid longer, and they usually say about one teaspoon per pound of oils, which for me would just round up to about five. Once again, totally optional. And it's too hot to do anything with, and where it's fluffy like that, can't do a whole lot with it anyway, but when it actually cools, it will be a soft gelatinous mixture. So, I'm just going to stir that sodium lactate in really well, scrape the sides so it doesn't congeal and get hard on the sides. See how it, where it's cooling down? It's starting to calm down. So it's good mix, good stir, and get all that sodium lactate in. And this is going to have to cool down quite a good bit before I dare try to do anything with it. I'm actually going to go ahead 
and get it into my three containers so I can color it. And I'll show you how I do that. But I'll do that off camera when I'm ready to fragrance it and color it. I'll show you. But we have soap. All right, I'm ready to fragrance and color. It's been sitting out cooling for about a half an hour, and look at how nice and fluid it still is. It's gelatinous, but you know, that's what it's supposed to be. So this is how I color my soap. These are my two colors, and they're in my fragrance oil. I'll go ahead and super fat my hot process just the same way that I super fat my cold process. It's just built into the recipe. So I put my, my colorants into my fragrance soil. So let's do the orange first. So let me just give that a little buzz with my mini mixer. And bring one of these over. Just go ahead and put it in, and I've got to be honest, there's a lot of stirring here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and start stirring, and then I will speed this up because this this will take a long time to get this fully incorporated. So as you can see, I'm just kind of stirring it, turning it on itself, folding it in, giving it a really hard stir, and I'm just going to keep doing that until the soap absorbs it. It will take quite a while. But this is how I do it. As a matter of fact, I'll probably just go ahead and stop the video here because this is going to take a long time. I'll bring you back when I'm ready to start the red. All right, didn't take quite as long as I thought, and the fragrance starts to cool it down considerably, which also starts to harden it up. So, going to have to move pretty quickly now. So, let's go ahead and stir this into the unscented. I went ahead and stirred the red in off camera because you saw what I'm doing and you see what I'm doing here. It takes a good bit of stirring but it will absorb it. And I like a high percentage. This All of these fragrances have a very high skin safe use, use, skin safe usage rate. So I use the maximum that I feel comfortable with at 6% so that's a good bit of fragrance. But see how that's absorbed it. Here's our red. See how it's absorbed it. And it's getting nice and thick. So I'm going to give these all just a good stir one more time. Here's our orange. And even though it is starting to firm up because it's cooling down, it's still very workable. And what I'll do is actually plop this into the mold randomly and then take a spoon and spoon swirl it and hopefully we'll get some nice swirls in our soap. Give this uncolored another good stir. And then it's time to start plopping into our mold. Once again, I'm just doing this randomly, no rhyme or reason. Because I'm gonna spoon swirl. try my best not to overlap colors, you know, not red on red. And give this a smack on the floor to flatten it. Smack on the floor.
just about out. Clean the big crock out. Spoon swirl. So while it's still semi fluid, I'm just going to take my spoon, and twist it all the way across. Give us a good smack down again. And just kind of pat that down to get any air out of it. And there is no need to spray alcohol on top because there won't be any soda ash. There's no lie in this to react with the atmosphere. So we won't have to worry about glycerin rivers because it doesn't occur in hot process because you're constantly stirring and stirring your glycerin in. And folks, that's it. Doesn't look like a whole lot right now, but I think it will when I cut it tomorrow. Now technically, I could put this outside where it's really cold, let it firm up, and take a shower with it tonight. I won't, it's not a good idea, but this is soap. It's safe to use. You can do that. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, we're back to cut our hot process soap. We've got some nice color variations, and even the uncolored part is a really nice bright white. There's the top. Now before I get started, it's four in the morning. I'm getting ready to go to work. It's very cold in here, but I wanted to cut this so it won't be so hard to cut today. I'm still in my bathrobe because it's very cold in here. I'll try to stay out of the picture, but if you get a picture of me in my bathrobe, I am sorry. But once again, it's four in the morning. It's very cold in here. So let's cut this in half and see what we have inside. It's about 20 degrees outside, and this room is one of the room, the only room in the basement that has no heating ducts. And I left the door closed. And we're getting ready to get plunged into that polar vortex or whatever it is that most of the country is getting ready for. Yeah, some very nice color variations. I think we're going to have a nice looking hot process soap here. So let's cut some of these and see what we have. Let's see, yes, we are in the picture. Okay, yeah, very nice.
And since the other one should look identical, I'll cut it off camera and get a snapshot. But that's what I have today. So I am really pleased with this hot process soap. So folks, thanks for watching and stay safe. Take good care of yourselves and I'll see you later this weekend for another cold process. All right, bye.